So today I'm going to talk about the new architecture and how I like it, actually. So who am I? I'm Bartek. I've been working on the reanimated uh, team for the past year and a half. Uh, and my main contribution was not reduce motion, uh, but it was actually uh, implementing layout animations on the new architecture. And that's why I hope that I can give you some insight into the new architecture. So let's explain the title a little bit of this presentation, uh, because it might sound a bit aggressive. It sounds like I didn't like the architecture uh, at the beginning, and that's kind of true. So in the beginning, for, for about two weeks, when I was tasked with implementing layout animations, I was, I was dying. <laughs> Uh, so basically, uh, what I thought was happening is that our already very complicated implementation of layout animations uh, would have to get much more complicated in order to work for the new architecture. And it seemed very scary for me. Uh, but slowly, it turned out that I actually will like the new architecture, and that it actually makes sense, and I can actually implement layout animations much easier there. Cool. So that's, that's why the title is like that. Uh, so let's talk about this talk and what is it about. But first, let's talk about what it is not about. Uh, I'm not going to give you an overview of new features and capabilities of the new architecture, so like the use layout effect and all that stuff. This was already covered in the great blog post by the React Native team and was already mentioned like 40 minutes ago by Casper. So cool. Uh, so what is this talk about? Uh, it's about layout animations, uh, how do they work, uh, what are they, if you don't know, uh, about yeah, the new architecture, uh, how does it work, but like more from the inside, not from the outside, let's say. And it's going to be a bit of, of a rambling, because uh, I just want to like, try and talk to you about, like, give you a snapshot of what I went through when I was implementing uh, layout animations on the new architecture. That's, that's the main outline of this presentation. And let's start with layout animations. This was kind of a layout animation, actually. Uh, so uh, we have three types of layout animations in Reanimated. The, there are also layout animations in React Native. Uh, we do them a bit differently. Uh, so the three types are as follows. There is entering. Uh, entering layout animations mean that the view that is added to the tree structure is animated in. The layout animation, which is a bit of a weird name because we have layout, layout animation, but that's, that's okay, uh, is an animation that runs whenever an, uh, a, a view is updated. And you can guess the exiting animation uh, removes the element from, from the view hierarchy. So if you don't know the API, uh, the API is pretty cool because it's very simple. Uh, if you want to add layout animations to your components, you basically have to use those three props, which are called entering, layout, and exiting, as I, like, that makes sense. Uh, and you can use one of those, uh, one of pre-built functions that, that we supply you with uh, for different types of animations. But you also can define your own custom layout animation functions with worklets, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and you can see here is actually an example, again, of a layout animation uh, where those views that are updated move, the one that is removed uh, exits out, and one is added in. Cool. Uh, so about that API, as it usually is with easy APIs, uh, the internals can be a bit scary uh, to achieve an easy API. So let's talk about the old architecture and how actually we implemented layout animations before. Uh, this is going to be shown as a a bit of a weird graph, but we had to go through two mostly like separate implementations. So for Android, we actually had to implement much, very much logic, logic in Java. We had to figure out uh, entry points for those layout animations uh, within the React logic. So we basically had to figure out when a view is added, removed, or updated in React, uh, and this was uh, and this has to be done in Java because that's, that's the entry point. That's, there's like no abstraction layer for that uh, on the old architecture. 
And then when we figured that out, we could actually use our animation engine with Reanimated to, to animate those changes. And if, when we wanted to implement the same thing for, for iOS, we basically had to do this again. So we had to write some logic in Objective-C to figure out when we actually want to start those animations and to apply the changes of those animations. And then we could use some common code base for, for the JavaScript part. Uh, and that's, that's not very cool because of obviously this part. So this part uh, of our code base is a bit annoying because uh, it features uh, some like uh, some parts of the of code that are very similar between Java and Objective-C and some parts that are completely different. And what do I mean by that? So basically, not only did we have to implement uh, entry points twice because we had to figure out when React does changes on the old architecture on both Android and iOS, so we have like a much greater surface for error. We also had to uh, write some algorithms that run those animations that figure out if we should start those animations twice. And if you look at the code base, you actually can see like some algorithms that are basically written in Java and then copied to Objective-C. They weren't copied, but the flow of the logic is basically the same. Uh, and what does it mean for us? It means that, and also for users, uh, it means that if there is a bug in one of our implementations, there is a probably bu a bug in the second one. Or it can lead to a situation when there is a difference between those two, those two implementations. And now we actually have to figure out which one's better, like which one's actually the proper one. And also what is important about this is that I am st still talking about two implementations. I'm not talking about three implementations because if you wanted to add another platform, there would be three implementations uh, in this scenario, right? Uh, and that's actually where the new architecture came in uh, because it allowed us with uh, a abstraction layer that was provided by the React Native team uh, to do uh, to, to write this logic basically completely in C++ without writing any native-only code, which means not only that we have now one code base for that, so if there are bugs, there are bugs only in this one implementation, not, not two of them. Uh, if we wanted to add some other platform, it should, <laughs> with an emphasis on should, uh, should be easy, uh, hopefully. Yeah, cool. Uh, so... Now that I've talked about this abstraction layer, uh, you are probably very curious about what does it look like, and I'm very glad you asked. Uh, so I'm going to give you a glimpse of uh, how I actually envision the, the whole thing that is called React Native. Uh, but we have to start with React. Uh, so how does React work? You, you have some components written down in your code base, and then those components describe some tree this tree is like stored in the memory. Uh, it's called UI tree. Uh, and every update that you do to your components updates this tree. But this tree then, actually, uh, whenever this tree changes, it pushes some changes to your browser uh, through React DOM. And what I want to emphasize here is that your browser is pretty smart. And by that, I mean that it is smart enough to understand what React means when it talks about some CSS styles, when it talks about flexboxes and all that stuff. But your phone doesn't really understand that, right? So for React Native to work, there has to be like some additional layer to translate those concepts. Because there are some auto layout concepts in uh, native platforms, but they don't really understand the, the web com concepts, right? Uh, so what does React Native do on the new architecture? Uh, there is this abstraction layer here uh, in between. So as you can see, the first and second part, uh, the, the components and the rendered UI tree, they, they are basically the same because that's what happens in the JavaScript land. But then this is, there is this uh, weird magic tree that's called shadow tree uh, that represents the, the current state of... Uh, of your tree in C++. It's, it's important that this is an abstraction in C++ that allows us, uh, allows React to actually, uh, okay. What is different between this and the old architecture is that before React would do changes in place on the native tree. And now there is this layer in between to which React renders, and then all the operations that need to be performed uh, before 
the native uh, platform has to actually uh, draw some views and all that stuff. Uh, all the calculations can be uh, done on this abstraction layer. And by calculations, I mainly mean the layout. So uh, this is the part when uh, those flex boxes, those that you, that you set, actually change to uh, calculated dimensions, to, to actual pixels, uh, which is very cool. And this shadow tree structure is actually immutable, uh, and it is by design, because uh, React Native team want, wanted it to, to allow for concurrent updates. So whenever you want to update the shadow tree, you actually have to clone it. OK, so if I... So now let's like go through some update that could happen in this uh, in this pipeline in this flow to maybe better understand what's going on because I worry that I didn't explain it the best. So let's imagine that all of those components, like the, the green and blue components, have flex set to one, uh, and there is some update. We want actually you can see they have the same flex because their width is the same, and let's say there is an update. So the flex of the blue component changes. Uh, what does it do? Uh, now there is a render. This is a React uh, concept. So the blue uh, view, blue element actually uh, updates, but also there is a render of the yellow element because uh, in my example there is no memorization, so that's what happens. Uh, but actually this turns out to perform some more updates on the shadow tree. As you can see here, we actually update not only the blue and the yellow components, but we also have to update the, the red component. The, the red node, shadow, shadow node. It, it, obviously, in shadow trees, we have shadow nodes. Yeah, uh, and it has to be updated. Why? Because it's an immutable data structure. We have to copy it. We cannot update it in place. And it is again by design. And when those changes are performed, now React can actually, thanks to Yoga, calculate the layout of this tree, uh, and push the changes to the native platform. And what is actually cool about this slideshow is that uh, the slideshow performed the layout animation. The, the behavior that you've just seen is exactly the behavior that layout animations would do in Reanimated. Uh, it makes sense because layout animations are actually implemented on this exact layer. So in between uh, the layout calculation and uh, before Re React Native sends those changes to the native platform, we intercept them uh, and change them and animate them. Uh, so that's, that's how it works. Uh, and if you want to learn more about uh, the shadow tree, uh, commit hooks, all that uh, weird sounding stuff, uh, Kuba Piasecki wrote two great art articles about that, how to, how to use it. Uh, yeah. And now, it obviously wasn't all so easy. Not only did I have to suffer for two weeks before I knew how to, how to do this stuff, but also then I also encountered some problems. Uh, and let's look at this example. Uh, I want to show you one of the problems, the, the most probably scary one. Uh, so let's look at this example. It is kind of ugly, but this is the exact example from our example app that I had to look at for extended periods of time, so you also have to do that. Uh, can you tell me, obviously you are not going to tell me, uh, how would you expect uh, this uh, tree of components to, to look like uh, in the native hierarchy? So, I mean, there is a blue, white root, a blue component, and obviously there are two red children, right? That's what old architecture would also say, not on, on Android, by, but that's besides the point. How would it look like on the new architecture? It's actually something like that. So if React Native figures out that uh, the blue component doesn't really have to be the father of the parent of the red components, uh, then they, it won't. Uh, just like that. Uh, and this optimization uh, allows uh, React Native to have like less deep trees, which I guess is a, a, it sounds reasonable for me, is a good optimization, but it obviously breaks some stuff. So in terms of layout animations, it happens that we have this example, this is the exact example. Uh, and on the old architecture, you can see that we run some layout animations, um, exceeding animations on those red views, and the blue parent actually, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, and the blue parent 
actually waits for those red children to, to animate out. That's the intended behavior of layout animations. And on the new architecture, it doesn't work. Why? Because it's actually not actually the parent, right? Uh, and I think I have a solution. I had a solution, but I don't like it. Uh, I think I have a second solution uh, that will actually be likable. But for now, if you like run into this problem, and this is not also going to be a problem with reanimated, I, I expect that some things will break because of your flattening, and be ready for that. Uh, so in this case, this is, this is the view hierarchy of this example. We have the blue view with two red children, and you just can tell React that it actually, the blue, blue view should be the parent uh, of those red views. And you do that by using the prop collapsible false. If you, if you use that, React Native will, will be fine with that, and you'll be good to go. OK, so that was reanimated for you. Uh, we ported layout animations. We ported all the stable uh, APIs to the new architecture. Hope you like it. Hope you try it. If you, there are some problems, let me know. Uh, if your layout animations don't work, it's, it's me. It's me. I, I broke it. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>